This is the second bowl from this maple tree. The first bowl was the previous video. This is me getting the bowl started and letting it dry. 75 years later. Okay, so here we are at the second bowl that I found that's got a, a bunch. It's got more than one knot. There's one there. It's a big one on the bottom. There's kind of a crazy one over here. There's also the pith on the center of the tree that needs to be taken care of. So there's probably three, then plus another one cut in half. So the, the bowl, I think, has prettier grain. It has amazing sort of striping patterns in it. But it's going to be more complicated to, to sort of fix it. <laughs> I can make some more of the circular inserts for this bowl as well. For this one, I wanted to do paduke and maple, so I'd get a, a red color and the, the lighter maple wood. So I cut the strips that I would need at a 10 degree angle. Then I could cut the strips into shorter pieces, I think an inch and a half and this will determine the thickness of the inserts. So with an inch and a half, I'll have enough height to have enough material to put these inserts into the curve of the bowl and have enough material. I can glue the pieces together. I think I was doing these in halves. So I would do a half and then clamp that up and let it set for, for just a few minutes. Then I could take the clamp off and do the other half. Just with 36 seams, it's a lot of glue to get in place. I can flatten one side as I want to attach these to a scrap piece of plywood so that I can hold them down to the CNC table as I want to cut a taper into the sides of these so that they'll fit into a tapered hole in the bowl blank. I drilled out the center just to clean up the point at which all the wedges come together. And later I will make a plug to go into that hole. Now I could bring all the pieces together into a point, although this would be difficult with so many wedges. So it's a lot easier just to drill out the center. <laughs> Now with this bowl, I wanted to make a ring that would go around the rim of the bowl. So I needed to make a big ring. I cut up a piece of maple that I had, and it had quite a bit of a bow to it. So I cut the length in half, and this would make the bow a little bit less so that I could joint that curve off of one side of each piece of maple. And once I had a face flat, I could then plane the other face and get the two sides parallel. This is important for making a ring as you want all of your segments to be the same thickness so the ring doesn't vary in thickness. I was thinking I would do a maple ring with some paduke accents, I guess you would say. And hopefully this would make it look like it would go with the circular inserts I was making. I wanted to do 24 segments, so I needed a 15 degree wedge for my sled. So I cut that out on the CNC machine. So then I could just cut all my segments. And you can see how you just go back and forth between the two fences. And I can put the ring together and make sure it's going to work. And the seams are all good, which meant that my angle was good. And I wanted to check to make sure the diameter of the ring would work with the diameter of the bowl. And that worked. So then it was just a matter of gluing up the ring. And I did it by putting glue on the Paduke spacers and putting those in between all the pieces of maple. One of the big reasons I wanted this drum sander was that I could flatten the rim of bowls that had dried. When they dry, they tend to warp just a little bit, so the, the rim ends up not being flat. So to start working on a 
bowl after it's dried, it's nice to be able to get the rim flat. And this worked, but it does take a lot of passes over the drum. And I tried doing the ring on the drum sander, and it kind of worked. But I ended up doing the ring and finishing up the bowl on the disc sander, as I can get a very flat surface on the disc sander. So if I sand this on the disc sander table, and I sand this on the disc sander table, and I keep track of which side was up, and then I flip one of these over, it means that joint may not be right angles to the table, but it'll keep the, the bottom of this surface and the bottom of this surface absolutely perfectly parallel. And that's what I want because I'm gonna use this as a hold down on the CNC table. So I can glue the four extra segments onto the ring. I did make sure that those tabs would fall on the CNC table where I could get at them with my hold downs. And the ring is ready so I can glue it to the rim of the bowl. So the ring is going to do double duty, where it'll help hold the bowl down to the CNC table, and it will make a segmented rim for the bowl. I just used an old motor as a clamp. <laughs> now, as that dries, I can clean up the inserts and taper the sides. So I can cut a three-degree taper, and this will allow them to fit tightly into the bowl. On one of the inserts, I tapered the inside hole as well to see how that would work. And now I can cut off my scrap piece that I used to hold the insert to the CNC table. The more that I can cut off on the table saw will be less that I have to cut off on the band saw. But I don't want to hit my tapered surface. In doing this, I'm not pushing the piece into the blade. I'm just holding the piece up. Looking at this now, I really should have had two push sticks. One to push it through the blade and then one to hold the piece up. And I can clean them up a little more. Doesn't matter a whole lot at this point. I can cut the tapered plug for the one insert that I did the, the tapered center on. And it seemed to work. One thing it did when I clamped the insert into place, it pushed one of the seams on the ring apart. I will find a solution for this later in the project. <laughs> I need to start figuring out how to cut the bowl so that I can add my inserts. And one of the things I started doing with this is I could drill a hole from the inside to the outside or from the outside to the inside so that I could see how the knot shifts from the inside to the outside as the, the branch may not have been going through the bowl at right angles to the surface. And you can see how the, the tabs work with the hold downs on the CNC table. I wanted to add one insert on the bottom, and I thought I could cut that insert perpendicular to the rim of the bowl. I did figure out, once I started gluing and really kind of seeing how the geometry worked, that it, it would have been better if I'd had a slight angle to the piece, as it, it stuck out a little bit on the outside edge of the bowl, but not enough to really cause an issue. I can cut the plugs for the other inserts and I can cut those off. I found this piece of wood that I thought was Paduk, but it's slightly lighter than the wedges that I used for the inserts. So it's, it's just a little bit different, but I think that's okay. And I can put these inserts in. So I want to cut a new mortise into the bottom of the bowl because I, I intruded into the mortise with the, with the insert that I made. And I want to flatten the rim of that mortise and I want to make the new rim at the height that the insert is at because I, I sank the insert into the bowl 
a little deeper than the rim of the bottom of the bowl. So the, the first thing I need to do is figure out how big of a circle I need to draw to make the area that I want to flatten. And I want to make that new surface at the height of the insert. So I can see with the way that the insert and the bowl intersected how big that circle is. And it's where the, the plane of the insert and the bowl cross each other. So I can measure that distance. And I was guessing it was probably about eight inches and it looks like it's about three and a half for the radius. So if I did an eight inch diameter circle, that should cover the bottom of the bowl that I want to flatten. I can cut the flat area on the bottom of the bowl and cut the new mortise. I cut it a little bit small and then I, I sort of snuck up on the size that I needed. So I could get my chuck to fit just exactly perfect. And I don't need the tabs anymore. I could turn these off on the lathe, but I figured it was a little easier and maybe, maybe a little safer to do it on the bandsaw. I can do sort of a pre-turning. I want to get the bowl round and get the rim skinnied up a little bit. This will set up the sides of the bowl to be thinner for when I cut the holes for the inserts. So I won't have as much material to remove. So I'm not really trying to get a good surface at this point. I just want everything to be round and the, the walls of the bowl to be thinner or thin thin-ish. <laughs> And I can work on the inside, mostly the rim, and a little bit on the inside to get it round. And I can get to the, the bottom of the bowl now. That first insert sticks up a little bit in the middle. I can drill through one of the knots and figure out where the center on the inside is compared to the outside and make sure my insert's gonna be in the right location. And I can drill out for that insert. Now something I did differently on this bowl was instead of cutting out a piece, I cut out the entire volume of the insert so that I wouldn't have a, a circular block of wood to fall out and possibly get sent across the shop by the router. I would just end up with wood chips. So it takes a little longer and it uses the bit a little bit more, but it's a lot safer. And I can glue that insert in place. So I, I think in looking at this bowl, there's a big knot at this side and I had made this big insert to go over that, but it, it looks like it's either not quite gonna fit or it's gonna be really close and it's gonna be hard to get it exactly right. What I'm thinking is to do a smaller one kind of to one side and then I have more of these. <laughs> do a second one that kind of overlaps that on the other side of the knot. Because it's kind of a long, it's kind of a long oval shaped piece that I have to replace. And then my big my big one that I made, I can cut in half and use at the ends. So here and here. My big one, when I put the insert in, one of the seams in the pattern came apart. And I've been wondering what I'm gonna do about that. So that'll actually help if I can cut this along that split and then use the two halves. That'll sort of save this one. And that also kind of happened with this one too. So if I can use this one first and put that split at the part that I'm gonna overlap with the other one, then I can, I can solve this problem too. I can solve this problem and this problem in one shot. So I can glue that second insert in place. One thing that happened while I was cutting these holes was my rim piece opened up. So I, I okay, made a little tiny shim to fit into that split and I can glue that in place. I can do the two inserts on the rim. And I thought about trying to clamp the whole bowl down and hold the inserts in place, but I wasn't sure they were exactly lined up on the seam. 
So to be safe, I glued them in place and then just held them for a minute or two while the glue set up. And that seemed to work. It's ready for a final turning. I've gotten a lot of comments about doing something like this where I start with a bowl blank and start adding inserts and add inserts until the, the bowl blank is completely gone and the entire bowl is inserts. This has actually crossed my mind in the past and doing this project, I'm realizing how difficult it would be to keep a circular form within the glue up as you continue to add inserts. Wouldn't be impossible, it would just take a lot of planning and careful systematizing of how the inserts go in so that you don't end up getting so wonky in the form that you, you can't find a circle to turn. But it would be really cool. <laughs> I mean, it would be neat to see something where there's a, a patterned piece that makes the entire form. With this, I started with the outside. Then I worked on the inside. And once everything was sort of balanced, I could then turn the speed up a bit. Then start to get the finish better with the scraper and get the, the final bits of turning done. So I got the outside and the rim basically done. then I could finish up the inside. I've got this dilemma with my work set up in that I have this nice dental light that I use when I'm turning, and it's great because it gives me enough light to see what I'm doing, but to do any camera work, it blows out the image. It makes a super bright spot and everything else is dark. So it's hard to do the video work and the turning work with that light on. But for a good bit of this, I had the sun coming in. So I had so much light in the shop that I could have my dental light on and work and still have a decent image. The sanding went a lot better on this bowl than the previous bowl. I think I'm getting better at making sure the scratches that I'm seeing are all from the previous sandpaper grit. I can turn the bowl over and do the bottom. Now I'm finding because I did the mortise on the CNC machine, it's made this much easier to work with. And the, the bottom of the bowl worked out nicely where I didn't even have to reshape the bottom of the bowl. I just sanded. I can put the other chuck back on. And I can put finish on. So I started by cleaning the sawdust off with mineral spirits. Then I can do the finish. And I'm just doing oil again. This bowl was a little more of a challenge than the last bowl. But I, I think that made for a more interesting design in the end. I think there's even more of the, the play between the geometry of the inserts and the more natural form of the grain pattern. And this one was definitely even more of, I, I sort of had an idea of how I wanted to make this and whatever it was in the end was what it was. <laughs> Thanks for watching.